Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Mark's. We are so excited that you have come to worship God with us this morning. You received a worship program when you came in. It has all kind of information in it. Highlight a couple for you now. Uh, immediately following worship today, everyone's invited to head over to Food Works and we're going to have a St. Mark's brunch over there. And uh, so that's immediately following worship today. Also, we're collecting new baby items for Northside Neighborhood House. You can bring those um, and drop them in the foyer on your way in, or you can go to our Amazon wish list and have them delivered here to the church. Again, we are so excited that you have come to worship God with us this morning. Let us stand and sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
kingdom zone, let us turn and offer the grace and peace and love of Christ to one another. we believe. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as we continue to worship.
At this time, I want to ask uh, our graduates and their families if they would make their way up here. Church family, it's one of the great uh, parts of being the family of God together is we get to celebrate significant milestones uh, in the lives of our families, right? You know, we, we baptize them as babies up here. And uh, they get to grow up in the children and youth ministry, and, and we get to celebrate moments like these. Oh, okay, executive decision has been made, and we are, we are coming over here. Very good. Gather around. So, friends, we are here to celebrate with these families, uh, the graduates that are a part of our church family. So we want to celebrate Jacob Moore, Gary and Christy's son. Wait a minute. Now, where is Jacob he had prom last night, right? Please tell me he's not in jail. Okay, okay, good, church family. I, I thought we might have to break out a prayer. Right? Yeah, he's in his pajamas asleep as far as we know. Okay, very good. So Jacob is graduating from Notre Dame, and he plans to go to UTC in the fall. So we celebrate that. And then we have the Moran family over here. We're celebrating Jack who is Mike and Lee's son. Jack is graduating from Macaulay, has plans to go to American University, that's up in D.C., right? And major in pre-law, so that's going to be awesome. We celebrate you, Jack. Thank you for playing with us in our band for a while, and, and we celebrate that. And then Mary Ellen right over here with Ron and Jeannie. So good to have Mary Ellen with us, and she's shared her musical talents with us many times. She is graduating from the Center of Creative Arts, plans to go to UTC in the fall to pursue a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. That's awesome. And then Kevin and Lisa, we're celebrating your granddaughter, right? Brianna Comstock, she has graduated from Moorhead State, that's in Kentucky. She has a major in Sociology and Criminal Justice, plans to go into social work and change the world, you said. Yes. Amen. That's so important. That's so important. I want to share with you guys just a little gift that we have uh, for you. If, that, if you will take that to her. Jack, we have that here. This, friends, is just a little spiritual journal, and it has on the front Hebrews 6.19, which says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. And so I want you to have that. And just remember, guys, as you make your transition and, and journey in life, uh, the faith the, the relationship that you have with Jesus is going to be an anchor for your soul. And you're going to feel the tide pull you in. You're going to feel the tide pull you out. But it's your faith and your relationship in Jesus that's going to be an anchor for your soul. And as you look out and you see all these smiling faces, grads and families, this is what it means to be a part of the family of God. We're here to love each other, to support each other, and to celebrate life's moments together. Would you join me now? In a spirit of prayers, we pray for our grads and their families. God of truth, the source of all wisdom and knowledge, it's by your wisdom that we are taught the way. We are led to life and truth in Jesus. I pray now that you would bless these graduates as they finish their course of study and begin a new chapter in their life. We thank you for those who've taught them who've walked beside them, for those who supported them along the way. We pray, O oh God, that you'll walk with these graduates as they leave, as they enter a new chapter, as they move forward in life. We pray, Lord, you'd remove any anxiety or confusion around their purpose, but instead, God, give them a vision that burns within their heart, clarity of vision and guidance, that they may live the purposes you have for them. Strengthen them as your Holy Spirit has given them talents and skills. May they be used to bless others and for your kingdom. Instill within them a confidence in the future plan that you have for them, where the energies they have may be gathered up and used for the good of all people and for the sake of your kingdom. 
God, we pray your blessings on these families as they have both excitement and anticipation about what the next chapter will be. And inevitably, Lord, there's some, there's some grief and sorrow that this chapter, this phase of life is now over. And so I pray you'll be with the moms and the dads, God, as they deal with that transition and, and just celebrate what you have done in this new season of life. Lord, as we gather as your people today, we know that there are many needs that we bring into this place. There are many who are concerned for family and friends, Lord, who are dealing with sickness and disease, and oh God, we pray for your healing power to be released. There are those that are concerned about family and friends who maybe are in the bondage of addiction or in financial trouble or in any other kind of hardship and distress, and God, we pray your provision in those situations. There are situations in our country and in our world that that bring grief and heaviness to our hearts. God, in so many ways, we need you. I pray that we could rise up and be strong as the people of God, filled with your Spirit, to help be an answer to some of these prayers, to be a friend, to be a source of encouragement, to be a support to make a difference in this world. We realize, God, as we come together in this place, we come for many reasons. We come to celebrate. We come to pour out our hearts to you, O God, when we don't understand. We come to receive grace and strength. We know that you are an ever-present help in our time of need. But as we come into this place, God, we know that part of what you're doing is energizing us and strengthening us so that when we leave this place, we take Jesus and the Spirit of God with us to be difference makers in this world. So we receive everything we need from you today, O oh God, to be the people of God. We would unite our hearts and our minds together as the people of God pray as Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Families, we celebrate you. Let's give them our appreciation. Amen. Amen. And, it, and unless y'all want to preach the sermon, you can be seated. All right. Well, friends, we welcome you to this time of worship today. It's so great to be able to celebrate these milestones in the lives of our church and our church families. We want to especially be mindful and welcome those who are joining us. On our live stream, we are always so glad to have you a part, want you to feel a part of our church family. One way that you can connect with us is make a comment there on the live stream. Let us know that you're with us, make a comment, share a prayer request, but engage with us and let us know that you are journeying with us. The way you, friends, can connect with us is inside your worship program, you've got that little tear-out connection card. I would invite you to look at that now. First of all, I invite you to fill that out so that we know that you're here with us. But, but most importantly, as the offering comes around today, turn that card in and share a prayer request with us. We have a team of dedicated prayer folks, in addition to us as staff, who, who that is their ministry, their calling is to pray for you. And so share something. It could be a praise. It could be a need. It could be anything. But, but put that on that card. And when the plates come by, turn that in as a way to let us know how we can be journeying with you. Also, friends, I know that you know this, but as you give, you're investing into the work of God here at St. Mark's Church. And that is so vital I hope you appreciate the fact that we don't just beat you over the head with that. We don't spend a lot of time talking about it. That doesn't mean it's not important. It's so critical that we all share in the ministry together. We all have different ways that we participate. But giving to God and God's church is one of the ways that we show our love and appreciation to God and we share in the mission together. Amen? Amen. Well, let's continue then in a spirit of worship. Through the eye 
as a man, it seems there's so much we have lost. As we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked, and one by one the enemy is whisper lies and let them off as slaves. But we know that you are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive. God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love, rescue every daughter, bring us back the wayward son, and by your spirit breathe upon them, show the world that you alone can save, you alone can save, as we call Dry bones come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive. So breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O oh breath of God, now Come alive, we call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive. We call out to dry bones, come alive. We call out to dry bones, come alive. Amen. Amen.
Welcome home. I like that. I like that. Now, some, you've heard of speed readers, right? Some of you may be speed sermon listeners. So you want me to go ahead and bottom line it for you? Is that good? Then y'all, y'all can go ahead and get our seats down at FoodWorks. Here's the bottom line. This is week two in our message series, Family Matters. Here it is. Are you ready? Family matters. Don't give up. What do you think? Family matters. And because it matters, I don't want you to give up. Anybody need to go ahead and go? Now let's unpack it. Let's unpack it just a little bit. All right. Now, in this series, as we are talking about family, of course, we're talking about those people that live under your roof, yes. But we're also talking about those people that are your circle of friends that you do life with together. That may be, in a practical sense, your family. In another sense, everyone together in this room who's a part of our church family is also a part of your family. So everything that I'm going to talk about today relates not only to those who live within your household, but all of those people that you are in relationship with. You know, the body of Christ, it's called the family of God. So what we're learning about today, it can relate to all of us, whether you have kids or no kids, whether you have grandkids, whether you are an empty nester. All of us are in these relationships, and these principles are going to be true for all of our family. I want us to look as our key verse this week. We're going to dive into the scripture that's recorded for us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 12. So follow along with me. And now this word to all of you. You should be like one big happy family, full of sympathy toward each other, loving one another, with tender hearts and humble minds. So that's the general statement that he's giving us. And now here are some particularizations of how we can do that. He says, for example, don't repay evil for evil. Don't snap back at those who say unkind things about you. Instead, pray for God's help for them. For we are to be kind to others, the Scripture says, and God will bless us for it. He says, if you want a happy, good life, one thing we need to do is keep control of our tongue. Guard your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil. Do good. And then I love this. He says, try to live in peace even if you must run after it to catch it and hold on to it. For the Lord, this isn't a threat, y'all. This is a promise. The Lord is watching His children. The implication is He's watching over us to bless us, to help us to do these things. He listens to our prayers, but the Lord's face is, It's hard against those who do evil. You see, family matters, friends. It really matters. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Now, if we look at the original context as Peter is writing, we will have to say that he is writing to a group of people that are experiencing some pretty intense persecution. As the Christian faith is developing and expanding, those around them aren't too happy about it. And so the group of people that Peter is writing to, they're experiencing some intense pressure, even persecution. And so his remarks in particular are addressed to that situation. However, I think that you would agree with me that there's a lot that can be relevant to us in our family and friendship relationships as well. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't snap back and respond in anger and be defensive. Pray for those who mistreat you. Show them kindness. Watch what you say. Control, or, or as the Scripture says in James, put a bridle on your tongue. It says our tongues are so powerful. It's like a little rudder on a ship that can control the direction of this this gigantic ship. Show kindness 
actively pursue peace and live with others. You see, even though Peter's writing this to Christ followers, because he's concerned, friends, and we need to remember this, he's concerned about how our interactions, how our behavior is a witness to the world around us. Do you ever think about that? I know you want your family to be blessed, and so does God. But part of the reason is so not only that we can enjoy those blessings, but because we are called to be a witness to a watching world. So I think these teachings are very practical for us today, not only with how we relate to insiders, but how we relate in our families. And, and since we're in church, y'all, we got to be honest, right? Have you ever found, you don't have to admit this out loud, but have you ever found that sometimes we treat those who are close to us worse than we do those on the outside? We do that sometimes, don't we? You know, we look good on the outside, but when we get behind those closed doors, sometimes we are far from living out those Christian ideals of Christian community that's filled and seasoned with love and grace, right? Let's be honest, family life, relationships can be hard, right? Really hard. Is, is anybody hearing me today? I know, I know this isn't you, but your friend, <laughs> right? I, we're, we're just doing this for your friend. Last week now, we talked about the power of God that we can have through the Holy Spirit. We explored that famous passage in Galatians 5 about the fruit of the Spirit. And in that, we were reminded that, that these powerful spiritual forces that make a difference in our everyday life, things that we need, things like love, things like joy that's not situational, but an abiding joy peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, the ability to have self-control, these are forces for good that operate in our life through the Holy Spirit. Are you glad God sends us the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit. We desperately need the power of the Spirit working in us and through us. If we want our families, and I think we all want our families to be that source of blessing, right? This refuge of peace, this safe haven from this chaotic and disordered and, and just confused world that's just like swirling around us all the time. You want to be able to come home and, and have that safe haven? Or you want to go to your circle of friends or your church family and, and have that peace? To get that, friends, we're going to have to be open more and more to the power of of the Holy Spirit to transform us, to make us like Jesus. Now, what I want us to do today is see the connection between that passage in Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit that we looked at last week and another very famous passage. I'm sure that you've heard this. In fact, you've probably heard this passage so many times that when you hear it now, it just goes in one ear and out the other, right? If you've ever been to a Christian wedding, no doubt you've probably heard 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. I would like us to hear that afresh today, and I want us to read this out loud together. So join with me as we read. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Let's do the next one. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen? Love sounds like a pretty powerful thing, doesn't it? Sounds like we need more love in our life. And remember, these come from the Holy Spirit. I want us to make this connection in our minds between the fruit of the Spirit. In particular today, we're talking about this love and this patience. And then the expansion of that thought here that we're seeing in 1 Corinthians 13, where love is patient. Love gives us the ability to always hope. 
to never lose our hope, to always persevere. Love gives us the power to do that. Love never fails us. You see, this is so important because family matters, friends. And we are to never give up. You see, these facets of godly, spirit-enabled love are so powerful, and they're so needed because, we've already said, relationships are difficult. Family life is hard. Creating this kind of authentic Christian community, it is difficult. And it's difficult because none of us are perfected in love yet, right? Nobody here would admit to being perfect in love. Fully like Jesus, okay, we got a little ways to go then, don't we? You see, here's the truth, y'all, we're prickly. Just like this little fella right here. That's us, okay? We're not warm and cuddly and fuzzy all the time. In our relationships, we're, we're more like this little guy right here. So if we have any chance of making this work like God intends, we're going to have to rely on the power of God to help us. You see, we're going to need God to help us to be patient when what we'd rather do is blow up and be angry, right? Come on now. We're going to need God to help us to hold on to hope when our situation seems hopeless. We're going to need the power of God to persevere when what we want to do, let's be honest, we want to give up, throw in the towel, walk away. We're going to need the power of God's love to have faith That love truly will never fail us or forsake us, even even when those that we love and who love us sometimes fail us. You see, God can help you persevere when you're ready to quit. You see, friends, part of God's calling for us as Christ followers is to demonstrate to a watching world what it means to be a family what it means to have a godly kind of love, that there is a better way. When two people are both committed to following Jesus, you see, God can help us walk through very difficult times. God can help us persevere until we get to that place where we genuinely do feel it, right? That's what we want. We want to feel love. But sometimes the power of love is there even when you don't feel it. Mutual love, respect, admiration, those things can come, but it takes time, it takes effort. And this isn't just about marriage. Like I said, this can be in a close friendship that has has drifted apart. This could be among your siblings, your family. It could be in the family of God, friends. It's all of these things that we call family. But the world is watching and the world needs to see that our faith makes a difference, not just in these walls, right? But in the walls of our home, in our workplace, wherever we are. John Stott, the theologian, has these insightful words to say about this tension that we feel between the ideal of, of where God is calling us to and our current experienced reality. He said the problem we experience whenever we think about the church, concerns the tension between the ideal and the reality. The ideal is beautiful. The church is the chosen and beloved people of God, His own special treasure, the covenant community to whom He has committed Himself forever. The community that's engaged in the worship of God, in love and compassion and outreach to the world, It's a haven of love and peace. It's a pilgrim people headed for their eternal home. That's the ideal. But here's the reality. In reality, we who claim to be the church, the family of God, he says we're often a motley rabble of rather scruffy, or I would say prickly, individuals. Uninspired in our worship constantly bickering and at odds with each other, concerned more for our maintenance than our mission, struggling and stumbling along the road, needing constant rebuke and exhortation, which are readily available from both the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles. Friends, we have to look no further back than yesterday when a very significant event happened in our own Holston Annual Conference. 
This is a seismic event, and I'm talking about something that is so big that you have to go all the way back to 1968 when the Evangelical United Brethren Church and the Methodist Church came together to form what we now call the United Methodist Church. You see, at this meeting yesterday, it was a special called meeting, 264 of our 800 and something churches that make up our conference. They walked in as fellow United Methodists, but when they left the room, they were no longer part of our little family. Differences have divided us. We have a, church, a problem not only in our families, right, but, but even in our church family. 1 Peter 3, Peter, as he writes to, to the early Christians and, and as he teaches us, he challenges us. He said, you should be like one big happy family. Be full of sympathy toward each other. Love one another. How would some tender hearts and humility, would that go a long way maybe to helping us? You see, if we want this kind of peace and harmony in our families, we would be wise not to respond in kind. And isn't that one of the hardest things to do? We want to be even. We want to get back. We want to settle the score. But the Scripture says, don't repay evil for evil. God wants us to take the high road. Don't snap back at those who say unkind things. Pray. Pray for God's help. Be kind. God will bless you for it. He says, if you want a happy, good life, control your tongue. How many times have you been in an argument and the instant you said it, you knew you brought the sword out? You said something that really wounds deeply. You know, our tongues are so powerful. They need not to be weapons of, of damage, but they need to be Agents of grace, they need to be there to encourage, to strengthen, to build up. You see, God can help us to control our words, to never use them as weapons. You, you, you've probably heard and read, you know, in, in your parenting journey, the power of words for our children, how we shape them and form them from, from the earliest days. The words soak deep into their spirit and it shapes who they are. Words are so powerful. So don't even try to pursue this without the power of God, friends. Without the Holy Spirit to enable you to do this. You see, family, as I think you know and you've experienced, family can bring out the best in us, can it? But you and I both know it can also bring out the worst. <laughs> they see us the way we are, not the way we want to be seen. But when we lean on the Lord, friends, when we rely on our faith, when we invite God to be a part of our family life, into our friendships, into our circle of friends, into our church family, we can experience the power of God's love to work in us. And when the power of God's love is working in us, hope then begins to rise. Even when you don't see a way forward yet, hope says that God can show you a way. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. When the power of God's love is working in us, you find the strength that God can give you to persevere when the going gets tough, when the sizzle fades. Or I like to quote that great theologian, B.B. King. He said, when the thrill is gone, hello, when the shiny wears off, how about persevering when things are tough? God's love allows us to find the ability to be patient. Patient while we allow God to move and work in us and in our family to bring a resolution. You see, when, when the power of God's love is working in us, we don't lose hope. We patiently endure. We wait for God to do God's work. Maybe it's behind the scenes. Maybe it's unseen. But God can bring us to a place where we're able to offer grace forgiveness, to restore the feelings that we want, to restore that respect and admiration, to heal wounds that div have divided us. 
Now, friends, I know that even as I'm offering a message of hope and encouragement, and I 100% believe that, I also know the reality is that family, these family matters don't always have a happy ending, do they? I know from my own personal experience, divorces happen, friendships dissolve, siblings decide not to talk to each other ever again, churches disaffiliate, it doesn't always work out like we want. But while those things are realities, we know that with God, all things are possible. Sometimes with us as flawed human beings, they don't work. But the failure is not with God and God's grace and love with us. For better or worse, God is with us. Even in the midst of those relational breakdowns, God's love remains with us. God's love will still be there when all of these things that we read about in 1 Corinthians 13, God's love is there. No matter what the outcome is in our family, in our relationships, in our friendship circles, God's love is there. God's love gives us hope. God's love allows us to persevere. God's love can heal our hurts. He can bind up our wounds He can allow us to have joy and peace again. God's love can make us feel whole when we feel broken and shattered into pieces. God's love is the kind of love that never fails us, even when we do. So friends, family matters. Don't give up. Open yourself up to God Trust Him in the process. Allow God to move and work through you and your family in ways that bring healing and bring life and love. Take the initiative. Be the friend that you want others to be to you and that you need. Take that first step towards reconciliation with that sibling, whoever that you are having a struggle with. Take that first step. Know that when you do, it's a step of faith and God is with you. Let's pray. God, I give you thanks that we can um, celebrate great moments in worship today and we can also deal with some harsh realities that we all face. I would be willing to bet that all of us in this room, whether it's our immediate household, whether it's our extended family, whether it's a friend, whether it's our church family, but we've all experienced this brokenness and pain uh, related to relationships because family is hard. We're prickly. We're sinful people. But I thank you, God, that we're not left uh, to our own humanness, our own human condition. I thank you that you have gone to extreme lengths to redeem us, to save us, to empower us to live a life in the Spirit that can make a difference in our families, that can make a difference in our friendships, that can make a difference in our churches. God, we call on you to help us in this way. Holy Spirit, empower us. Make us to be more and more and more like Christ. May we have the very mind of Christ. May we hold in our hearts the intentions, the purposes, the desires of Christ. Help us to overcome, Lord, our prickliness. Help us to be more like you. I thank you, God, that you never give up on us. Even when maybe we give up on ourselves, I thank you, God, that you're tenacious and you pursue us with your love. I pray we'll just open up, God, and let you come in and do the work you want to do in us and through us. And I pray this in Jesus' name and God's people said. Here at St. Mark's, we truly believe that God loves all that all are made in God's image, and that God sets a huge banquet table 
and invites all. And it is our prayer that it is a crowded table. Let us stand and sing. church family. I know that uh, we've talked about some pretty heavy stuff today. I know it stirs up a lot of feelings and emotions, and that's okay. As your pastor, I want to be able to journey with you, so if we need to talk this week, let's talk. I also want you to look around the room and just know this is your spiritual family, and that's what we're here for. Let's talk about deep things of life together. If you're a younger person, look around and find someone that's a little further down the road than you are. Ask them how they did it. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what has God brought them through? But friends, that's what we do, right? The church is more than what we experience here for uh, 54 minutes on Sunday morning. How about journeying together in faith this week, right? So let's journey together, amen? amen. Family matters, so what? Don't give up. Amen. Let us proclaim our benediction together. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watch over you. Wherever you are, 
God is. If you feel comfortable holding the hand of someone close to you, please do so as we sing our sending chorus.